Guys, this week I just purchased a few pieces of animated history and I can't wait to show you. Stay tuned. For as long as I can remember, I've always been a fan of cartoons and animated films. During the summer, I remember sitting down and watching the Disney Channel where they had a show called The Wonderful World of Disney, where the big guy himself would give you a behind the scenes tour of things like their rides and my all time favorite, how cartoons were made. Way before computers, there were animators who had drawn out characters on pencil. Then they painstakingly took the time to paint them on this clear transparent paper called a celluloid, or cell for short. Frame by frame, those celluloids were shot on camera and the end results, magic. So. Over several decades, your favorite TV shows and movies growing up were hand-drawn and painted until the 1990s, making The Little Mermaid the last Disney film to use animated cells. Then animated shows on TV followed after around the 2000s. So you're probably wondering after all these years, what happened to those cells? Well, for Disney, they keep them locked tight in what I like to call a Disney vault. However, Walt Disney called it something else. Walt Disney Animation Research Library was actually started by Walt Disney. It housed all of the animation art that came off of the films, and Walt called that location the morgue. And she's not wrong. If you haven't watched this video, you will see what happens to these cells over time, as celluloid tends to deteriorate on their own sometimes even with the help of the environment or lack of air. Remember, a celluloid is a thermoplastic sheet made mostly from camphor and nitrocellulose, literally smokeless gunpowder. They are both flammable substances that could combust based on how hot the area can get. Before you freak out, relax. So long as you take care of your animation cells, they'll be fine. More on that later. While most companies are preserving their cells for DVD and Blu-ray releases, I've always wondered what happened to those that never even got a chance to have the reproduction qualities that they deserve. Some say they get destroyed to make room for more projects. Others are left someplace to rot and decay. Thankfully, there are some good people that give us, the fans, a chance to purchase a little bit of animated history. I came across a fantastic website called Animation Legends. Unfortunately, during the filming of this video, I discovered that they are now officially closed. But I was fortunate enough to purchase them before it was too late. One from the 1980s called Dinosaucers, which was a really freaking cool show for its time. And my all-time favorite show next to Transformers, Captain N, the Game Master. <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't believe it either. Let's face it, I'm hooked. Now, I've never owned one of these things before, so I did a little research on how to take care of an animation cell because the last thing I want to do is speed up the process of its decomposition. So when you do have an animation cell, just think about the following. Environment, frame or no frame, and TLC. Number one, environment. You want to try and keep these in a nice, cool environment. So make sure that wherever you put it, there's not a lot of direct sunlight and make sure you have something that checks the humidity because again, you don't want it to, you know, deteriorate faster. You don't want it to start wrinkling. And especially when it comes to high temperatures, you don't want it to engulf in flames. The cells degrade naturally by the nature of the material that they're made of. And that can be exacerbated by different environmental conditions. They're going to start to shrink a little depending upon the temperature and humidity. And they're going to start to have ripples, kind of think about it like an ocean, waves. Number two, frame 
or no frame. Now that you got an animated cell, you're asking yourself, how do you want to do this? Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. I really love that series. Whatever you want to do with your cells, that's your choice. Whether you frame your cells or not, it's going to deteriorate. That's the nature of the beast. I, for now, I'm going to keep it in a binder just until I can figure out where I want to put it. Right now, the only safe place is actually in the comforts of my bedroom. Not a lot of sunlight is in there, and normally my room is a lot cooler than any of my other rooms in the house. Because when it comes to summertime, it gets hot when I film in here. When I find the right frame, I will have a follow-up video. Since I'm going to keep them stored away for now, I decided to purchase a portfolio case, preferably from Etoa, and you can get this from any art store supply or even Amazon. The reason why I chose this particular case is because this contains an acid-free polypropylene sleeve, which is pretty much good for your animation cells. And just to be on the safe side, I also purchased an archival acid-free tissue paper as well. Normally they are used for comic books, but you can also use these for animation cells, preferably keeping them in the back to preserve the paint. And number three, some TLC. Whether you frame your cells or storm away someplace, they need some air to breathe in order to release the toxins that they create. They degrade in a chemical process called hydrolysis and it slowly forms vinegar. You can smell that in the storage boxes and the vaults at the ARL. If enough hydrolysis happens, if enough vinegar is produced, the flat sheets start to warp and buckle. If your cell is starting to do that, find out why. Is it the environment? Is it the humidity? Same goes for those who are keeping it in storage. Is the environment cool? Do you have those silicone packets that you get from shoe boxes to help take the moisture out? So if you have them framed, just every 12 months, just take them out and let them air for 24 hours. With that safety jargon out of the way, it's time to open up the envelope and see what's inside. Okay, I've also decided to open these guys inside my room. Cause again, my room is a lot cooler than any of the other rooms in my entire house. And uh, once, and I feel, and this is just me personally, once I have them exposed, I wanna keep them in a nice, cool environment. Here they are. Um, I purchased uh, back to back, cause I, when, I, when I, again, when I saw some opportunities that popped up, um, I, I just had to. Also, just as a fair warning, whenever you have an animated cell, please do not roll, please do not bend. Cause again, you wanna preserve these guys to the best of your ability. I'm, okay, I'm going to start with this one because this one has, um, I ordered two cells with this one. Let me just take a quick peek in there. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up this one too because I'm going to... Just get this one ready. Just like the 24 karat gold um, coated medallions, I wore gloves in that video. And I have, again, I'm choosing to wear gloves now. This time they're clothed because uh, upon research, our hands, let's face it, our hands are naturally oily. They keep our skin from being dry. So from what I've researched, when it comes to handling, you know, cells, whether they are high quality or not, the fact is they recommend that you wear cloth gloves. And again, I know there are a lot of people that just don't care because you're not handling it for long. I know that, but just for me, I feel comfortable wearing gloves because again, I want to preserve these guys to the best of my ability. All right. so. Here it is. Oh, in all of its pristine. Check it out. Again, 
This is from the show Dinosaurs. This dude right here, his name is David. He was voiced by Leslie Toth. Ryan, Allo, come in. Um, I don't know if he's done any other uh, animated shows afterwards, but I mean, David was one of my favorite characters on the show among the dinosaurs, but let's carefully take him out. Now, if you want and you don't have anything, you can keep it in this container, they said, according to their um, frequently asked questions. But again, like I said, <sighs> look at this. It's an actual animated cell. Let's turn it around and you could tell, see, Back here is where all the paint and, and all that stuff came from. And it, just look at this. This is an actual animated cell. I love this. There are grades to the quality of an animation cell, but no, this, this is beautiful. Carefully, without bending, put him in here. ever so carefully and I will again monitor and keep an eye on him and if I see any signs of odd activity then I will put him back in actually I probably should also put this in here too just then unfortunately this is too big I would have to have gotten a bigger um, portfolio case in order for me to fit this in here. So in the future, that is what I will do. But um, in case, this is also, guys, just to let you know, polypropylene as well. People use this in comic books to also preserve them. You can do that too. All they do is also ask you to, you know, just cut a little bit of piece so that way it gives it air to breathe also. So just a fun fact. And forgive me, out of all, ex out of all the excitement, here is a uh, proof of authenticity that as it says right here this certificate is to authenticate the original production animation art from the animated series dinosaurs the artwork is one of a kind authentic original piece of art that was used in the production of this cartoon there are no two alike in this world of course all copyrights are retained by the respective owners i just own the physical property but not the right to reproduce this art so make a note of that but no so i'm going to I'm gonna store it right back here. All right, so um, this one, however, this is not an animated cell per se, but I'm still going to preserve it. This is what I have been waiting for people. <sighs> what I have here, like I said, Captain and the Game Master, this, this show has been my childhood. This, like next to Transformers, this was definitely my childhood. Actually, this one I could probably wear without gloves because once again, it's just a piece of paper, but I'm just going to be very careful with it because this, this came, this was, someone drew this. So, like I said, actual freaking art of Kevin Keane from Captain N. Fans would hyperventilate if they saw me dancing with the princess of Videoland. For those of you who don't know, and you could hear the excitement in my voice, this is Kevin Keane. He was the main hero for Captain N. For those of you who don't know this cartoon, this cartoon was came out in the 1990s, late 80s, early 90s. And it was about a boy who got transported into his video game and he was helping, you know, uh, a princess. He was helping uh, Simon Belmont, Mega Man, who sounded like a frog, don't ask, Kid Icarus, and so many others. So yeah, if I am not mistaken, this could be the exact scene from um, season one, episode two, House Bayou, the nefarious episode where there are two, there are two versions. The first one that they gave us on the DVD is crap because they botched it up. 
and then they came out with the second one to fix it, but the second version edited out what was in the first version. Duke, will you stop chasing things? <clears throat> He's been getting me in trouble doing that ever since he was a pup. Sorry if I upset your cat. But I don't have a cat. Dude, will you stop chasing things? Sorry if I upset your cat. But I don't have a cat. Now me personally, I actually in the past was, make, was having some fun and I meshed those two together to make one coherent episode. I may reload that again and tweak things up a bit, but it was fun to do, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so this, this is history, people. I mean, look at it. Because now the thing is, looking at the episode, you don't see the shades. This is to tell the artist that you're supposed to put some shades in here, but I didn't see any of that in the in the episode. I guess they took it out. This could have been, um, this could have been a page that they decided not to add. I don't know, but I, oof, I really, really, really wanted to color this in. And when I mean it, I'm gonna, I, I want to scan it and actually, you know, Photoshop and, and do all that and just, ooh, chills, chills, people, chills up my spine. Oh, this has brought out the nerd in me big time. Get in there. Oh, I love it. I love it. And for those of you who don't know, the guy who does the voice of Kevin Keen is none other than Matt Hill. If you don't know Matt Hill, let me give you a clue. Uh, 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 as a kitten in a tree. Yes, he is Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie. And, <laughs> the, and he's done numerous other stuff in the past. So yeah, no, this is why I'm so excited because again, this was the first time that I heard Matt Hill's voice before Ed, Ed and Eddie. This was, like I said, um, when I wasn't watching Transformers, I was watching this. And to me, even though people thought that this was stupid and ridiculous and had nothing to do with Nintendo and they were botching up Nintendo, I don't care. I love this show. This is incredible. And anyone who loves this show too, leave a comment below, put a like, let me know. But, uh, when I found this, I was like, I needed more. And I once again found another piece of Captain N, <sighs> Captain N history. And it is actually a cell version of Kevin. Um, so let's go ahead and open that one up. Okay, I, like I said, I'm excited. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Ah! Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Okay, 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 okay. All right, now that I see the apple, this is actually the scene of uh, Nightmare on Mother Brain Street, I believe where um, they ate an apple. Do what you want. I'm going after the princess. It took them to their nightmares. And I mean, look, it's an actual cell street. And, oh, I'm counting in. Oh, 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 you have no idea how excited I am about this. Like I said, the nerd in me. Oh, I was freaking out. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go! Oh, look at it! Oh, it's beautiful! Oh, oh, it's fantastic! And you can tell, you can tell if, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up a little close. Yeah, so see how some of the paint is starting to flake off? And all that stuff? So this was, this was slowly starting to deteriorate and like I said, I want to save this thing as best as I can. Oh, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. It's beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. Oh, tears. I'm crying here. Oh, oh. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take so much good care of you. See, because the thing is, I really, really want to frame these. I want to post them. But, oh, just look at that. Look at this. It's beautiful. I, oh, oh, I love it. I, I mean, it's, it's real. 
This is seriously real paint, real animated cell from an animated cartoon. And the fact that I'm blessed enough to have this, it, it's, it, it's beautiful. It really, really, really is. And once again, just in case, it is artwork, it is one of kind, it is the original piece of Captain N. And I have inherited it. And I love it. I really do. I, I, I love this. I, oh, oh my, it's, it, it's like, and I know there's no way it, it's impossible to, to even get it, but it's like having a piece of let's say Transformers the movie. If for whatever reason, somehow someone has actually got a hold of the cells from Transformers the movie, the 1986, and was selling it, you have no idea how many people would grab at that, especially me. Because you know, I, I know what scenes I would grab at. It would, it's Optimus, of course, my, my all time hero. And I would just grab at it at any given chance. That's how special to me these things really are. And again, I want to preserve them as best as possible. So um, to be on the safe side, um, I'm gonna find, I know there are different types of these silica uh, gel beads and whatnot. And um, for now, I'm gonna use these packets to you know, kind of keep them. To, to keep the moisture in because looking at my um, thermometer, my smart thermometer, it says that my humidity is 46. I also want to get uh, one of those humidity indicators to keep an eye and make sure that the humidity is not too much for these guys. Cause again, I want to keep an eye on them. I want to make sure that they are, I mean, this is, this is paper. I'm not too worried about that. But I, you know, the fact that these two cells right here I want to save them. I want to protect them and make sure that they don't fade. They don't degrade and, and just go from here. Like I said, this, this is awesome. This really is. Overall, I'm so glad that I took the opportunity to purchase these things. This is definitely a memorable experience. Speaking of animation history, ever wonder what could be the most memorable cartoon intro in the 1970s? Well, just click on this video and find out.